Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Curl Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode, I'm starting off by making a few changes to my communication situation. Instead of having this antenna on Pratchett Station tuned to the Clark 4 City, which is the main satellite in orbit around the moon, I've just told it to point at the moon, and hopefully that will work. Uh, let's, Of course, whenever I do anything, it's a little bit... Uh, tough to see things these days with uh, remote tech. It doesn't really show the lines. Well, right now it's showing these lines, which is okay. But anyway, hopefully that will be good. Uh, unfortunately, we're on the opposite side of the planet from the moon, so no way to check. I've also tuned this main dish to active vessel. And so it is active. I've turned off the lights on the station in order to save the electric charge. So everything should be okay. Now I'm going to risk trying to turn to my geostationary satellites. Well, I said uh, G-STATS when I really meant G-STAT. There's only one functioning geostationary satellite around Kerbin, and functioning is a strong word for it. Now it's in the... no, it, it's got... it's got sun and it's not generating enough power. Of course this was before I, I uh, upgraded and changed the settings so it really wasn't meant for this sort of thing but while it has the... no, no it doesn't have any dishes free. If I turn this uh, dish on it's just gotta change things to... it's just gotta make things even worse. So so yeah our G stats do not have the capability to talk to the moon. So just checking that out, and now we know. I've made what I think are the necessary modifications. We've got service module tanks here now. So now the MMH N204 will feed into these little thrusters, hopefully. I've uh, gone with a more three to six way symmetry. So now we've got three lights. I'm just going to make sure that they're starting on. And so the six thrusters, six solar panels, and strict six struts. So it's looking like that now. The struts don't actually weigh very much, so it's not too bad. We are a little bit shorter on Delta V because the conic service modules are a little bit uh, less efficient than the other tanks. Uh, I've lengthened this tank out a bit, as you might be able to see. But it's not to the point where we're passing two tons here. So we're we're okay, I think. So without further ado, this is what it looks like when combined. And I think uh, the lower stages are more or less the same way. So not too much concern about that as long as we get things mobilized properly. Now this Okay, I'm going to trust that these and this are the upper fairings. Alright, so they'll come off after this third, the second stage and let's have the solid boosters stay... Okay, uh, this is a little bit messed up. Let's have these, this one light first. Okay. All right. So we'll still have the cone issue. Maybe we should have more electric charge. We didn't really have a problem with that, did we? I didn't think so. Oh, I guess we did have a minor problem. This space for an extendo solar panel over here, so let's do that. Um, well, this is the only choice, I think. We'll go away. Just the one. Okay, so that should help with that. Sure, there's tons of stuff I should be action grouping, but I'm eager to get this underway and to see if this could actually work. 
So let's back it up. And head out. Okay, I've time warped to the proper timing. I'll mostly skip the flight up, but let's do the launch. And, yep, yeah, SAS on, throttle up, light, and launch. You'll notice that I I have a little bit short hydrazine. What I did was I emptied the original hydrazine tank, which I think was badly located, and added hydrazine to one of the conic service module tanks that I added this time around. So that's why this is the empty tank, and then this is the part of the tank I added. Okay, you saw rocket boosters are off. And we continue. Okay, first stage separation. Separation is good. Need to add some of those little retro rockets. The, unfortunately, the retro rockets are actually in the B9 aerospace pack. Uh, they're the ones that are aerodynamically very, very nicely shaped, and uh, yeah, I I used them on the Saturn uh, C8, the Nova C8, recently, and uh, I I do tend to use them whenever I have B9 installed, but I don't have B9 installed in this in this installation, so I don't have those here. Those would be very helpful, though I don't know what stage in the tech tree I'd unlock them in. Okay, that's the way. Uh, where did I put my antenna? Well, I think I actually grouped it to one. Yep, there it is. Getting ready for a second engine cutout. Second engine is out. Third stage is lit. Whoa, a bit of a kick. But I think it's Gimbling should be able to handle it. Still don't have a reaction. Did we have a reaction wheel on the probe? Uh, yeah, it looks like we do. Really, really weak one, but... I am thinking about how to efficiently rearrange my heads-up display. I'm not going to do it right now, but perhaps by the next video I'll have this rearranged so that the display isn't so haphazard. I'm trying to figure out where to put things. Probably this should go like here. Some stuff changes shape, and then of course kerbals sometimes pop up out here. Gotta figure out how to manage all of it. I mean, obviously, you could have more stages, and so that could extend all the way up here. Don't really need far that much. Probably uh, this information should be spread in different windows up here, and then shrunk as necessary. This doesn't really fit very well in this space. It's a little bit annoying. If there was some way of shrinking this horizontally, that'd be nice. Okay, here we go. Coming up on orbit. Okay, 243 by 235. Looks good to me. And so, now we plot for... Well, first of all, let me get some... some electric charge running, as we seem to be short on that. Where is that solar panel I added? Extend that. 
All right, so I think we're safe to look into the lunar transfer. Okay, I think this is a fine transfer. Uh, 86 kilometers on the periapsis. A reasonable amount of delta V necessary. Going to tell it to point to the node. Time delay, signal delay shouldn't be too much, so I'll just handle the burn myself. I seem to get a brief pause every few seconds where the whole thing just sort of seizes up there, right there. And again, right there. Huh. I don't know what that's about. Okay, looks like we'll be in the dark, so I'm going to hit the lights again. Not the most brilliant thing, but any light will do. Now, do we need uh, all these rockets? Yes, we do. Fuel flow is very unstable. Okay. That makes things a little bit more interesting. Okay, well, here we go on the Odge. Oh, that's not what I wanted to hear. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. Alright, well that's successful. Getting close to the end of our burn here. Okay, a little bit of delay. Uh, so we're a little bit off. I'm going to try and fix that with hydrazine. Let's see now. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, don't turn and make it hydrazine off. Uh, no, prograde, prograde. Okay, well, reaction power on this is not huge, so this might take a little bit of time to fix. Let me get rid of that. Okay, well, let's see how much we can get out of the hydrazine. So, uh, I've got the weak thrusters on there, the half blocks, the uh, 0.07 kilonewton thrust RCS ports. On the bright side, very accurate. On the downside, perhaps not enough to do this. We'll see. Okay, now we're talking. Took uh, about 10 units of hydrazine to get to this. Remember, we only had 40 in the beginning. There was an empty tank involved. Okay, I think that's quite satisfactory. About 29 kilometers and uh, no mid-course plane change will be necessary, though, unless you consider this little RCS burn to be one. Uh, not quite mid-course, but pretty close to the ascending node, not that we actually use the inclination at all. And I'm going to orient retrograde. At the very least, we need to orient in such a way as we eventually get to recharge. Of course, we're on the dark side of the planet, so this is not a good time to figure that out. Let's get into the light and then see how we need to orient. Okay, that's done. And I think we may need the services of another dish as well. So we need to see how much electric charge it is when combined. And we just want to point this at Earth. Or, yeah, well, Earth slash Kerbin. Okay, so that's active. Uh, I think we can turn the lights off as we get into the bright side of the planet. Now let's see if the direction we're tilting in helps or hurts.
Okay, it looks doable. So let's go where we have gone many times before, but never have landed. Whoa. <laughs> How did the moon periapsis suddenly get to be 1,266 kilometers? I didn't even, did I, I didn't, well, I, I guess I did time warp. I time warped to get into the daylight, but wow, that's a big change. No RCS was involved. Hmm. I don't like that sort of thing, but okay, let's get over there. I, I, fixing it now seems like a futile effort uh, since it will just mess up after I time warp. So here we go. So either we'll be able to do this because, well, practice station is not the best place to be connected, but I think uh, we're on the same side as mission control and that should mean that everything is okay. We'll see in a moment. Well, no, that's not true. Uh, 18 hours. I forget how long it takes to get from your entry into Moon or Sphere of Influence down to your periapsis. 18 hours. It could be very bad, actually. We'll see. Oh, I should point in the direction of the node before I start time warping. Hopefully that'll save us the necessity of using the little rock, uh, solid rocket boosters. Well, I'll fine-tune it once we actually do the burn. I I suppose I actually should do a burn to get closer, but I the only way to do that is with the hydrazine, and so I'm a little bit hesitant. Uh, have, setting the periapsis at 1,289 kilometers is not the best thing, but I really only anticipate being able to do one more burn with the third stage, so we're going to keep it out there for now. The lander will have to do most of the the business of getting closer to the moon. Very stable, okay. Hopefully we'll stay that way as we get a little bit closer to the maneuver node. Okay, I think we should do the burn. So, getting into orbit around the moon. After a little bit of the delay. Uh-oh, uh-oh. No, 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 no. Uh, retrograde, retrograde. Oh, crud. Oh, okay, so we ended up with a little bit of an inclination change for no apparent reason. Okay, well. Okay, I've shut it off. And the time delay, good. Actually, I, I timed that okay. Um, trying to take into account the delay. Not just the 1.27 seconds, mind you. It, it'd be a little bit simpler if this was actually the signal delay. But there's also a slight lag in the program, so it's actually more like two seconds. Makes it a little bit more difficult to time things, but I'm not that precise anyway. Then again, we're going to be trying to do a landing. Now, we've got one more anticipated ability to relight this this engine. So I'm going to bring the orbit down at my periapsis there. So I'm going to try and get into a nice altitude. And that's before dumping the third stage. So, one more light, and then we'll be able to dump this stage. Uh, let's point at node, even though that got me into a little bit of trouble last time. Looks like we're about ready. Let's see how... Very stable? Okay, well then we'll just go with that. And light. Okay, I've shut off the engine. 
Okay, well that's good enough for me. Whew. Now, let's see if we can land this. Let's get rid of this maneuver. Where shall we land? Okay, I don't need that. And... Seems like we could plot it right now. So we're just going to be satisfied with landing anywhere, but clearly not quite as scenic a position as... And we're going to be on the opposite side of the planet, so we'll, we better hope that our satellite constellation around the moon is going to be good. But yeah, this sort of patchwork of many craters. Huh. Possibly around here would be okay. Can't be too picky though, without any of the big basins, the seas of the moon, if you will. We'll make a landing wherever we can. It is going to be on the light side, so that's that's beneficial. Okay, I think it's time to ditch the third stage and see if these engines run. Uh, we are in a proper position. Okay, that's good. So, and we do expect both of these to decouple, right? Uh, this one and this one. Yes, that's fine. That'll do. All right. I've given the signal. And the decoupling has occurred. Okay. Right. Now. Igniting the rockets on this. Don't know how many space bars this will take. Okay, there we go. That's fine. Still got a solar pan panel out, but we are on the dark side, so we're not getting any electric charge, but that should be fine by the time we get on the other side. So that's all right. Okay. Yep. I think we can just give this a little bit of burn here. Ah, the engine's light. Very important, yes? Okay, I've shut down the engine already. All right. Trying to still get used to the delay here, so it's going to be a little bit complicated. I'm not particular about where we land, as long as we actually do make a landing. No need for that maneuver. Okay. That looks very cratery. I guess that's a good thing. So, descending steadily. Let's get this into the light and then I'll start making my my uh, my burns to slow down. Gotta keep an eye on the true altitude here. You'll notice the surface is actually at 10,000, well, roughly 9,000 kilometers. So, not 9,000 kilometers, 9 kilometers. Which is pretty high. Could easily smash into something. So, I'm looking here for 50 kilometers, not there. Wow, look at this. Uh, it's, it's, it's 13 kilometers? That's... I didn't think there was anything... I, I don't know what it's being measured from is the thing. I didn't think there was anything that high on the real moon, but... Okay, I'm gonna turn Smart ASS off and go with SAS. Not too sure how well the reaction wheel control is. Two. I gave a joystick command and uh, I didn't seem to turn very much. Let me try again. OK, 
Hmm. Not much at all. Hold on. Okay, there's, there's a pitch command. Okay. I'm just trying to get used to the delayed controls now. It's going to be quite a lot of issue with that. I could try and use Smart ASS. Let me give it a primer here. I'm going to say 132 pitch 2. Let's see if that lines up right. Thirty one twenty eight maybe. Fortunately, SAS does the thing where it stabilizes it at the new point. If I just gave a pitch command and it continued in that direction, that would not be good. I do like in this case, with this signal delay, that SAS kills rotation. Okay. Probably not going to end up all the way over there. Probably looking at a landing somewhere over here. Maybe even this crater would be good. Okay. Alright. Our time to impact is still 20 minutes. Stage time. Let, let me burn a little bit to see stage time. Okay, uh, 10 minutes at full thrust. It's good to know. So with about 12 minutes to impact, maybe I should start the burn. That might be cutting it a little bit close, but actually as the burn occurs, the time to impact will increase because we're slowing down. Have we done a GUI experiment here? Time delay on the... okay, no. Even the experiments have the signal delay. Actually, the only thing that doesn't... Uh, MechJeb seems to be inconsistently responding to the delay. Sometimes it seems to, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it might just be lag. I'm igniting it to about one-third throttle. Okay, two-thirds. Okay, I'm gonna use Smart ASS to adjust my pitch a bit. I'm gonna pitch up a little bit more and go to full throttle. Okay, pitch down. What I'm using is the vertical speed indicator here. I definitely don't want to be going up. But I wouldn't mind not going down too fast. The acceleration with these rockets is not too high and I I haven't had too much experience using this thrust to weight ratio on the moon. I mean, of course, I've only landed on the moon once. So, and that was with a crewed mission without signal delay. So, lots of experimentation going on right now. Okay, I think it's safe to just uh, aim at the retrograde vector now. Looks like we'll be landing around here, wherever here happens to be. Wow, it takes a long time to land on the moon. Uh, of course, I barely gave this enough thrust, but 
It's a long burn. Gotta retract this solar panel. Uh, uh, not the dish, the solar panel. Because I don't think it's getting any... Well, it says direct sunlight. Alright, I guess I'll leave it on. There's a high probability it's gonna fall off at some point, though. So, Smart ASS is making the adjustment quicker than the signal delay should indicate, but since I'm programming it in and I'm not making adjustments more than every two seconds, I think it's fair play on, on the whole. I'm not making fine adjustments just yet, and I don't anticipate doing so either. I suppose I could do it more legitimately without Smart ASS and uh, just use my own devices, as it were. Whoa, though so maybe that's not a good idea. Or maybe I sh this is the time to start uh, putting RCS on. So we're landing around here. Haven't looked at a map, haven't figured out where here is. Should have done. Uh, I'm a bit busy right now. Uh oh, uh oh, don't drift, don't drift. I overdo the control input sometimes. Okay, I think we have to cut throttle here. Okay, the surface horizontal speed is down to millimeters here. Altitude's still pretty high. Okay, don't do that. Oh, I... Oh, no. God sakes. Hate deviations on landing. Come on. Alright, this is not working out well for me. Let's go pitch 90. Execute. <laughs> Just so I can get a little bit more situated here. Fortunately, we have an overabundance of fuel for the type of landing that I usually do. Which is a very, very cautious and... And uh, inefficient landing, as you can see. So, good thing I packed plenty of fuel on this thing. So really on the final descent, uh, it's just throttle management. And in that case, uh, I am still facing my delay here. So I'm throttling down right now a little bit. And there it actually makes a change. This time to impact can't be right, because we're 97 meters up, and I'm hovering. I guess it's plus or minus 10 seconds, it's not that accurate or something. Oh well. Very, very fine adjustments to the throttle here on landing. Uh, 
I mean, literally nudging my throttle fractions of a millimeter here. Okay. Oh, don't tip over. Okay. I think we're safely on the surface. A little bit hard to tell sometimes, but uh, yeah, I think that's an acceptable surface horizontal speed. All right. Uh, oh, uh, oh, it's because the RCS ports are still firing. Maybe. Okay. Uh, turn those off, but there's still a residual surface horizontal speed. Okay, observe mystery goo. We finally done it. We have finally landed on the moon with this, with this silly little Vern lander. Okay, um, yeah, uh, Midlands. I could have probably predicted that. Yeah, transmit the data. Okay, Midlands. Very good. We really only put two goo containers for symmetry. I think log pressure data if possible. Ah, probably should have figured that. Temperature scan. 32 science, very good. Transmit that data. Gravioli. Okay, uh, detailed survey of local gravity, 88 science, transmit. Should probably turn SA, uh, ASS off. Okay, and uh, finally, the big one, the probodobodyne uh, QBE, and we need the land readings. Oh, uh, activate data recorder, of course. Strictly speaking, it, this was even more cautious than my normal landings, but I mean, I, I should have come away with about 800 meters per second left. But uh, I certainly did not want to go through this again. Uh, this is this was going to be the last time we tried this for the first time. I mean, this is uh, this is the last first attempt to get an unmanned probe to the moon. Any other experiments tacked on here? I guess we didn't uh, unlock the seismometer yet. Or did I just miss that? No, it doesn't look like we have the seismometer on here. Shame. This is definitely the time to do a seismometer reading. Seismic accelerometer, I think it was, actually. Okay, now we should be able to do land reading. Okay, lunar surface readings, 400 science, transmit data. And you know, we don't get any benefit from returning it back to the surface of Kerbin anyway, so... We have done our science with the Vern lander. Finally, finally successful. And, uh, yeah, I think, uh... We, obviously, we could do it from all sorts of biomes, but I think we'll take a look at what parts we can unlock and look to doing more spectacular things in future episodes. So, on this note of, note of great success, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.